JFT, just fair and direct. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to JFT's daily market review for October the 20th. I am Haralamos Pissuros, head of research here at JFT, and I will talk about yesterday's main market movers, what's my opinion moving ahead, what are today's important events, and how they could affect the markets. But before we start, let's uh, read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds uh, to read the rest, and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, the US dollar traded lower against uh, the majority of the other major currencies on Tuesday during the Asian session Wednesday. It underperformed versus uh, the Kiwi, the Aussie, the Pound and slightly against the Canadian dollar, while it decked out some gains against uh, the Yen and the Swiss franc. The greenback was found virtually unchanged against, uh, against the Euro. Now, the strengthening of the risk-linked Kiwi Aussie and recently the pound, combined with the weakening of the safe havens yen and franc, suggests that uh, financial markets continue trading in a risk on manner yesterday and today in Asia. Indeed, looking at the performance in, in the equity world, we see that uh, major European and US, um, and US indices traded in the green, with the only exception being uh, the French CAC 40, which closed virtually unchanged. Now, the positive appetite, although softer, rolled over into the Asian session today as well. Japan's uh, Nikkei 225 and Hong Kong's Hang Seng were up, but China's Shanghai Composite uh, was virtually unchanged and South Korea's uh, KOSPI slid. Now, with, uh, with, no f with no clear fresh catalyst to drive the markets, we believe that the continuation of the risk on, of the risk on activity may be due to investors uh, becoming optimistic with regards to, uh, quarters, uh, with regards to quarter three earnings. Remember that last week, big US banks reported better than expected results, uh, encouraging market participants to add to their uh, risk exposure, while yesterday it was a turn of uh, Johnson & Johnson and travelers to reveal upbeat numbers. With the US long-dated bond yields also climbing higher, it seems that market participants continued to add to their risk, to their risk exposure, despite still anticipating central banks around the globe to tighten their respective monetary policies soon. Uh, this may be due to um, rushing into t uh, this is excuse me this is maybe due to rushing into taking advantage of ultra low interest rates before they start rising or it could be because the earnings results are revealing a more encouraging picture with regards to the global economic outlook than uh, than uh, previously assumed now, with all that in mind, and with several major indices around the globe breaking, their, uh, bre breaking key technical resistance zones last week and keep drifting uh, north, we believe that more positive results could encourage more stock buying. At the same time, risk-linked currencies are likely to benefit, uh, while the safe havens may stay on, on the back foot. However, as we noted yesterday, we are reluctant to call for a long-lasting recovery. We prefer to take things step by step, and the reason is that the fundamental background that triggered the latest correction in equities has not changed much. Oil prices remain elevated, which could still lead to further acceleration in inflation, while China continues to face several problems, from default risks in the property sector, to tight regulations uh, for tech firms, and fresh lockdown measures due to the spreading of the Delta coronavirus, uh, coronavirus variant. Now today, the main event on the schedule may be Canada's CPIs uh, for September. The headline CPI rate is expected to have inched up to 4.3% year-over-year from 4.1%, while no forecast is available for the core one. Following the Bank of Canada's uh, Business Outlook survey, which revealed that business sentiment hit a new uh, record, uh, 
accelerating inflation could add to the case for further tapering by the Bank of Canada at, its, um, at, next, uh, at next week's uh, gathering and may prove supportive for the Canadian dollar, which has been performing very well recently, aided by the rally in oil prices. Let's not forget that Canada is the world's uh, fifth largest oil producing nation, while it holds, it holds the fourth place in terms of exports. Now, as for the rest of today's events, during the early European morning, we already got the UK CPIs for September. Both uh, the headline and core uh, rates uh, slid slightly, slightly more than uh, more than anticipated. Excuse me, but the pound barely reacted. After all, both rates are still well above the Bank of England's objective of two uh, percent, and thus they are unlikely to alter uh, the bank's monetary policy plans. Still, British policymakers are expected to push the hike button before year end. Eurozone's final CPIs for, for September are, are also due to be released, but as it is always the case, they are expected to confirm their preliminary estimates. Uh, I don't remember the last time where Eurozone's final CPIs were proved to be a, a, a market mover. They usually pass totally unnoticed. With regards to the energy market, we get uh, the Energy Information Administration report on crude oil inventories for last week, and the forecast points to a slowdown to 1.857 million barrels from 6.088 uh, uh, million the week before. However, bearing in mind that yesterday the American Petroleum Institute reported a 3.294 million, uh, million barrels inventory built, we would consider the risks surrounding um, the Energy Formation Administration forecast as tilted to the upside. As for the speaker, we will get to hear from Chicago Fed President Charles Evans and Fed Board Governor uh, Randall Quarles. So that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much for watching and listening. For those who are interested in learning about the main events of the week much earlier, you can subscribe to the Weekly Market Outlook webinar, which I'm holding every Monday at 7 o'clock a.m. GMT. You can, find, you can find the link in the description below. So, goodbye, have a great day, and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again tomorrow. JFT, just fair and direct.